Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data dependent stories at theminermag.com. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. Matt is back with us after his sojourns throughout Europe, visiting Prague, Oslo, London, and elsewhere. Welcome back to the show, Matt. Thanks, Will. We love to have you here. Okay, today's show, not gonna lie, folks, not a lot of mining news this week, but there is a lot of AI chatter, which we will discuss. And then we'll get to the Bored Apes at the very end for a shitcoin cry corner, because the story was a little funny. Again, not a lot of mining news. Why? Because most of these mining news bits are kind of like related to monthly updates and we typically cover that with anthony power so we'll have him on probably in a week or so maybe two weeks to talk about all the updates from all our miners for june but for today we're actually just going to power through a few headlines and then go back and talk about them so matt put your uh, seatbelt on and we'll just breeze through all these things and then we'll what was and then we'll discuss them because again, like Bitcoin is at like 31K, there's ETF news, there's Larry Fink talking about Bitcoin, but I'm assuming most of our listeners have found that information elsewhere. We really just try to talk about mining on this show. Same story. It's the same story. I don't, I don't want to talk about the ETF anymore unless it actually happens. Okay. So let us start with a Coindesk story first off. Applied Digital Stock surges 12% after announcing its third AI deal. This was posted on June 30th, so about a week ago now, but it does bleed into all the other stories. Applied Digital is most well-known in the space for hosting for Marathon Digital. They have a bunch of sites, mostly in North Dakota, but I think also in Texas, as they are a Texas-based company. And they are making a deal with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, HEP, to build and host NVIDIA H100 graphics processing units, GPUs, essentially, for high-performance computing. This bleeds into all the other headlines, including Hive blockchain's announcement as of last Friday. We did a podcast about this with Frank and Aiden, about how they're increasingly moving into cloud hosting. Uh, They see this as like another pillar of revenue for them that enables them to be more flexible with their Bitcoin mining. So we're definitely on like a press tour about that. Then we had a Wall Street Journal article sort of summarizing all this. So I I guess once you get into the Wall Street Journal, you can kind of be like, okay, this is like a thing. Put our little stamp on it. Uh, This Wall Street Journal article was kind of funny. They're talking about the crypto mining explosion and pivot into AI. Uh, Essentially, they go and talk to all these former altcoin miners who are mostly using GPUs and my Ethereum or other altcoins, not really Bitcoin, and how over the last 12 months or so, they pivoted into AI processing, typically on a lower level than like the chat GPTs of the world, but they're still doing rendering and GPU demand probably for like universities and things like that. Okay, so we'll we'll take some standouts from all this. The first one I want to have is about this Wall Street Journal article. It, It was... It was funny how there wasn't really a mention of any big miners besides CoreWeave, which did recently do a huge funding round. They basically focused on the small guys who were doing the GPU stuff and ignored these 20 plus public companies that are actively mining Bitcoin and pivoting into AI stuff. And maybe that's good that the journal didn't look at these guys, because I do think a lot of these public mining companies are just basically hopping on and doing press tours about AI and they don't care about it that much. They just want to see their stock go up. But at the same time, there is some companies like Hut that are specifically building this way and they weren't mentioned at all. Okay. We have three headlines for you, Matt. Any takeaways? Well, first, like on the point you just said, I do think, you know, this is catching buzz um, because AI is so, it's such like a, a hot topic right now. But I would say the vast majority of miners are not going down this road. Because I think it's like, it's an uphill battle, really. Um, it's not the same space, right? You need completely different types of machines that are configured in a different way. Even if you were Ethereum mining with GPUs, it's not just like a plug and play. We're just going to start doing high performance compute, you know, AI services. 
the the end the end clients really have different expectations as well um you know probably are like latency and uh uptime requirements you know for these types of contracts um and you're you're an entirely new competitive market um i mean you're you're going to go up against some giants really i mean you mentioned that the miners that are taking this on are going to do more kind of nimble um kind of smaller scale maybe ai startup type services for people like that um but you know you you go up and try to compete against microsoft <laughs> and uh and amazon and google like the major cloud service providers um that are vying for uh generative ai um general you know sort of large language model type of services like that's a that is a major mar like market can be they, they have so much runway they could just use it as a loss leader and just stomp you out and just bleed you dry so it's a, it's it's a challenge i think it's a dangerous game um to get into now i think um and i'll toss it back over to you in a second i think it's potentially lucrative if you do it right i mean what do miners know really well they know um how to build out you know a server center and they have the infrastructure they likely have the power contracts um but it is it's it's another capital intensive um industry to compete in and it's not the same servers and it's different end clients um and i just think it's i think it's going to be a challenge yeah so the first one i point to and for those listening and not watching on youtube a quote up here from Hive, which did its uh, yearly earnings call last week. So they're a Canadian company, so their earnings come at a different time than everybody else. They said, quote, companies are now mindful that they don't want to upload sensitive client data to a company like OpenAI as a public LLM or a large language model. What we aspire to offer at Hive through Hive Cloud is privacy where companies can have a service agreement in place, ownership of their data, and privacy, and still run AI, compute workloads on our back bank of GPUs. That was according to Aiden Killick. Of course, we had a podcast with him at the same time uh, that they did this earnings call. So we got a lot of the same gist on the show. I think a lot of it, specifically with Hive and a few others, is a lot of marketing. But there is some component to what they've done in the past, right? Like Hive has invested in enterprise GPUs. So part of it is true that they are doing this. That being said, very different models, very different customers. And to be able to pivot into this right when the hype cycle is going is like classic crypto mining behavior, right? Where especially for these public companies that they just need liquidity in their stocks. They've been diluting everybody. So like, why not jump onto this bandwagon and help yourself out a little bit? And that leads me to the other point, just looking at mining stock portfolios, I'll pull up. Mining stocks have been doing really, really well. Uh, I thought this was going to be a rough year because of dilution. But turns out I was wrong. Like a lot of these stocks have just been doing so well. They're still trading just like Bitcoin. They're going up with Bitcoin. And so many of these stocks are up a ton. Uh, the craziest one is Core Scientific, which is up over a thousand percent. And then some others are up, you know, this is up 27% of the day that's Greenage. And over the 52 week range, like it's still really bad. So, like again, Greenage, 52 week range. Buck fifty five is our lowest when their top was four eighty nine uh, or forty eight dollars. You go down the list, and most of these are still down like double digit percentages, high into like seventy eighty percent. But they are recovering, and for people who purchased these bags like earlier than you know, the last twelve months, they're probably in a bad position. But more recently, they're in a better position, and that's often because the marketing for these companies has pivoted drastically. Last thought on it, I give it back to you, and then we'll go on to the last topic for the day. I think there's going to be some companies that do pivot into this more strongly and they do find a good sync between these two things. It's just going to be about getting the right equipment and infrastructure in place. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of demand for rendering and all that. And Bitcoin mining can be something that works along with it. But you're going to have to have a larger company that it has the ability to pivot in between multiple things and work under the same umbrella. Yeah, I mean, uh, to analogize mining a bit, like... You know, right after the halving, when I'll just speak about the last cycle, but it's happened kind of cyclically a couple of times. Well, there's kind of like a gold rush and the price is really surpassing 
the speed at which infrastructure can be built to mine and it becomes really lucrative, uh, it seems like kind of entrepreneurs in this space are doing something similar with AI where the infrastructure really hasn't caught up, but the demand for these types of services has really taken off. So if you have the infrastructure in place, it might make sense for you, like a short-term gain. Also from the point that you were bringing up, you you kind of catch like a, a, a media tailwind, so to speak, if you attach yourself to AI as a public listed company that could bring in investors of your stock. And I mean, who doesn't want to have a quarterly report where you talk about um, you know, how great everything's going and how you're going to diversify your revenue um, and how, you know, your shareholders should be happy because the price has gone up so much. Hey, I mean, it's a Long Island blockchain company or whatever, Long Island Dice T blockchain company. Yeah, Long Island AI. Yeah. It, it, it was something. Yeah. And like, I think that kind of bleeds into some of the quirkiness of the mining industry where there isn't like this puritanism that you get in some of the Bitcoin circles with mining. Because mining is like, the margins are so thin that they're willing to mine other coins. They're willing to do AI stuff. They're, there's lawsuits left and right. So I think it's a different the, sector. Some of them are finding their competitive niche, as you were saying kind of with the quote before. And there are even like several, like um, HUD 8's CEO, right? Like comes from a background of just managing um, server infrastructure farms. Yeah. Right, well positioned to understand the types of clients, their needs, et cetera, and kind of a general uh, compute world that's outside of mining itself. And so it seems like that that was that's been a part of their strategy to diversify their revenues, and they seem like they're kind of attacking this head on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to follow. Like we'll see if this uh, plays out, you know, for for all of these companies as like AI uh, moves forward, and then also. Um, as having season approaches and Bitcoin changes, right? Hundred percent agree. The grift will increase until prices get better, and then it'll be even worse. Okay, let's talk about another grift: Board Ape Yacht Club, big NFT, one of the most popular tokens out there. The most popular NFTs, you should say, that does have a token, the Ape Token, out there in the wild. It's been around for about two or three years there's been celebrities like justin bieber steph curry tom brady hosting apes actually don't know if tom brady has an ape but a lot of these people have had apes some people think that yuga labs the company behind board apes basically a brand of marketing gift grift to uh, put these in people's hands and pump the price of the floor price of these nfts but as all these things do come to an end parting has been pretty rough We've seen a collapse in the last few weeks of the floor price of these NFTs going from a high of 153 ETH all the way down to a floor of about 34 ETH recently. It's a 20-month low. This has led to a lot of frustration among our ape friends and also has had some unexpected consequences for the lending protocol that these apes have been using. Maybe you can walk us through that. You know, in the NFT craze, right, and it like definitely became a craze. I mean, if if you've been in um, Bitcoin for a while, like you might have been shocked that your completely normie friend just came up to you in 2021 and was like, hey, I heard you're into Bitcoin. Will you tell me about these ape image coins? And you're like, hmm, I don't know much about that. But <laughs> you know, like that definitely happened um, for me. And a part of this craze, right? Some developers were attracted. And so the NFT space really grew beyond just collectible art for a little while. Um, and off the back of that was kind of like this pseudo DeFi NFT world where you could like fractionalize your NFT and, um, you know, people could sort of trade their pieces of a singular collectible. Or you could take out a loan against your literal image your NFT uh, piece of art, right? It's like putting up um, the Mona Lisa and taking out dollars as a loan, whatever. But um, yeah, not all that glitters is gold because as you mentioned recently, the, I guess the floor price, right? Which is the the least amount that you could sort of bid and actually attain an NFT of a collection for Board A Yacht Club, um, the, one of the most prominent on Ethereum, the floor price went down, like you said, like around 80%. 
And so if you did lend it out, you got liquidated of your of your eight. And so there has been some tears shed on Twitter. All right. Yeah. It is really quite amusing for me to follow. I'm sorry for the people that lost money, but it is hilarious. I mean, the the NFT world is is like it's a sensation to follow. Um it is some kind of phenomenon, and even if you're kind of a staunch Bitcoiner, it's just high quality entertainment. It is high quality entertainment, like, and that's why I call it shitcoin cry corner because there's a lot of tears. Typically, these things don't work out very well. Uh, these board apes themselves, ugly pictures, purchased on Fiverr, and then put up in ten thousand picture collection. They sold for a ton of money. We had you know, celebrities buying these things for the millions of dollars. They were basically like the pinnacle of the 2021 scam market. And as these things do, they fall apart at some certain point. And so I think a lot of these ape holders that at one point they were worth about $500,000 are watching the money just dwindle, dwindle, dwindle. And it's down about 10x from there. You know, they could have made a lot of money, but they held on to it thinking that they were going to make a lot more. Yeah. But that's a high. It's a vibe. Me. The vibes. Yeah, it's a vibe. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I, I think like the one thing I'd bring up before we close here is like, Will there be something like this with inscriptions and ordinals next cycle? I'm a big believer in ordinals, but I think there will be some sort of like, there'll be a lot of like scam NFT things on top of ordinals because it's permissionless. And how does that hurt or help Bitcoin? I'm not sure. Some of these NFTs did bring a lot of users to Ethereum. So they're beneficial that way. But then people also lose their shirts. Yeah. That's both ways. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh... It's a tale of crypto history where if people can openly issue assets, right, it's a confidence game. And there will be some big, confident, promising founder that convinces a ton of people to invest in this thing that inevitably is a scam. And there's there's no actual future long-term sustainable value to it. And it crashes and burns and a bunch of people go with it. But you know what? The sliver of hope is that in that process, they learn about economics, right? Self-custody, you know, maybe the unique properties of Bitcoin. That'd be pretty cool too. It happened. I've seen it. Does happen. It does happen. Okay, we will close out there. We will see you again next week, Tuesday. We have an interview either with Corman or Kareem Helmy. I'm forgetting which one we are going to publish, but those are both coming out in the near future. And then we'll see you again the week after. Again, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up subscription on YouTube or give us a like and comment on Spotify or wherever else you listen to the show. It really helps out other miners find this information. Thanks again for listening and enjoy the weekend. Cheers. <laughs>